Coming up, I've just seen the Lego Batman movie and I want to talk about it. So guess what we're doing in this episode of Diz Pop. Diz Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Be sure to visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Rhino. Um, just a quick thing. Um, when I recorded this episode of Diz Pop, I did not notice there was a malfunction in my camera that happened about 15 minutes into the video, and the screen, for some reason, just cuts to black. And the audio's there, so that all worked fine. It's just if you're watching this on YouTube... Um, When it gets about 15 minutes in, you're going to notice it's pretty much just going to be little stills and whatnot from the movie, from Lego Batman, as we go. So I apologize about that. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. I think it was just maybe a formatting issue with my memory card in the camera. But like I said, you'll still be able to hear the whole episode, and thank you for bearing with me. I apologize. Now on to the show. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and my arm is down below me if you're watching this because my dog, Rocket, won't stop barking unless I'm petting him today. He's very needy. Um, But anyway, I've just seen the Lego Batman movie. Um, Just came out last Friday, and uh, like I said, I want to talk about it with you guys. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen the Lego movie that came out in 2014. If you haven't, what have you been doing with your life? It's fantastic. It stars the likes of Chris Pratt, uh, uh, Chris Pratt as Emmett. You've got uh, Elizabeth Banks as Wild Style. You've got Morgan Freeman as the... Oh, my goodness. I can't remember the character's name, but he's the mentor. And it's just... It's a wonderful movie. And then Will Arnett's Batman Lego character is in that movie. And this is essentially a spinoff of that. Now... It is a spinoff, however, it is its own self-contained movie. So there's no real references to the other movie. You don't have to have seen the actual Lego movie to go in and enjoy this movie, I don't think. Um, I think there's one or two things that you might be, like, confused about because they don't completely explain them in this one the way they do in the other one. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to dive right in. We'll make it short and sweet here. But uh, so this this film, the Lego Batman movie, is directed by Chris McKay, uh, his most notable. This is his first feature uh, length film, his first movie theater movie, because uh, he's most notable for his work on Robot Chicken. Um, the film was written by Seth Graham Smith, who wrote the, uh, the novel Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, for those of you who have read that. Uh, Chris McKenna, who wrote some episodes of Community, and he, I guess he also wrote the newest Jumanji movie and Spider-Man Homecoming. So I'll just say right now, things to look forward to. Um, it's apparently his year is what it seems like by a list of those movies. Eric Sommers is also credited as a writer who worked on Jumanji and Spider-Man, as well as Jared Stern, who worked on Wreck-It Ralph and The Internship. And then John Whitington, who doesn't really have anything listed on IMDb. So if this is your first one, John, good for you. Um, but... Yeah, so it's a team of writers, which at first I was a little nervous about, because when you start seeing too many writers in a film, it does get a little like, oh, did something happen along the way, and they had to take over the idea from somebody else? You don't know. Um, But those are the folks who worked on it. Uh, So the plot of the movie is the movie opens with the Joker trying to blow up the city, um, as the Joker often does, you know what I mean? Um, and he's doing that with the help of various Batman villains, both famous and obscure. So there's like the Riddler, you'll see Bane, uh, Harley Quinn's in there. And, um, then you'll see the more obscure ones, which I thought was really funny. Um, like Condiment King, uh, who, a a villain who apparently shoots condiments like ketchup and mustard. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they make a couple funny references to that character, but, um, yeah, so, so a lot of the obscure villains. Um, for those of you who don't know, let me start this, uh, rewind back here a little bit. The Lego movie, the Lego products, like the Lego video games, all that stuff, they all have a real sense of humor. They treat whatever they're doing with this sense of uh, levity, um, like the Jurassic Park Lego games. Those are always really funny. They kind of make fun of themselves. So the Jurassic World one has a, a scene from Jurassic Park 3 with the talking raptor. But then all these other raptors show up and they're talking. And so... It, it, it pokes fun at its own material, and that is definitely continued here in this material. It's almost um, semi-aware of itself, um, and I think the Batman Lego movie is a great example of how that works. But anyway, back to the plot. So 
Batman comes in like a rock star to stop them. I mean that very literally because he's got a guitar and he sings. And if, for those of you who saw the Lego movie, you know that Batman talks about making his own music and he's got a song in there about being an orphan and lonely. And and that continues in this movie, which is great because it's, it's really funny. Um, anyway, so he saves the city. In the process, he managed to... His, uh, he manages to offend the Joker, basically saying, like, he's not his greatest villain, and um, no one's important to him. He only cares about himself. He has no greatest enemy. Uh, so the Joker gets away. Batman saves the city, like I said. The Joker's watching TV later, and he sees Superman on the TV talking about how Superman has just put his greatest villain, Zod, into the Phantom Zone, because it's a very special prison for a very special villain. So, um the Joker wants Batman to basically acknowledge their relationship. So that's kind of his driving force in this movie. So the movie is all about relationships because meanwhile, you see Batman show up at his enormous bat cave and his enormous empty mansion, and he watches uh, romantic comedies and laughs at them. Uh, so clearly he doesn't, he thinks relationships are hilarious. Um, it, it's funny too, because he's watching the you complete me scene from Jerry Maguire. Uh, so that makes for a lot of fun. Um, and then, um, Alfred calls him out on this, um, and saying it's time for him to face his, his greatest fear. Batman's like, snakes? Clown snakes? So, it's not clown snakes, it's, uh, Alfred says no, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, being a part of a family. You know, meaning something to somebody. So, um, so that's, you can clearly see, like I said, the movie's about relationships. So I'll go a little bit further into the plot. I don't want to give too much away, but I do want to just like set it up. So we go over, we go to, uh, Jim Gordon, uh, the commissioner, his retirement party where his daughter, Barbara is named the new commissioner. We all know Barbara Gordon. And, um, he, uh, she wants to create a city where Batman and the police force work together, which is mind boggling to Batman because he works with nobody. Um, and so when he first sees, um, Barbara, he actually has a little bit of a crush on her. They play a fun little eighties, uh, oh, I just died in your arms tonight. Um, you're welcome for that little musical note there. Uh, so in that process, because he's too infatuated with Barbara, he accidentally adopts Dick Grayson somehow through a series of events. Um, and so, yeah. So from there, the Joker shows up, and he wants to surrender along with all the other villains as part of his master plan, which is eventually to get put into the Phantom Zone. Now, that's all I'll say about the plot, but the reason why the Joker wants to be in the Phantom Zone, too, is because all the special, real bad guys are in there, and uh, you can hear some phrases through when, you, when you're seeing the newscast of Superman putting Zod in there. You can hear um, phrases like, Wingardium Leviosa, or... Um, exterminate so some fun other if you're familiar with the lego franchises and the lego dimensions and the lego movie you know that all these universes tend to cross over with each other a little bit so look forward to some fun some fun cameos in there i'll, I'll try not to spoil them all in this uh review here but um I want to talk about the cast, too, here for a second, because this movie is just all-star cast. All-star, all-star. All, all, every single person, wonderful in the their voice roles. Uh, so Will Arnett is Batman. Michael Sarah, Robin. Of course, these two Arrested Development fellas. Um, Rosaria Dawson is Batgirl. Uh, Ralph Fiennes is Alfred Pennyworth. Siri is the voice of Pewter. Uh, yeah, that's right, the iPhone, see, so that's fun. Uh, Zach Galifianakis as Joker, um, fantastic job. Jenny Slate as Harley Quinn. Jenny Slate, we love Jenny Slate. She was also in uh, Zootopia. She was the mayor's assistant. Uh, um, Conan O'Brien is actually the voice of the Riddler. Uh, Doug Benson is the voice of Bane, and it's a really funny because it's like Bane's voice, but like from Batman, from The Dark Knight Rises Bane. Um so it's funny. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. Who every time Catwoman says something, she's like, meow, meow, I'm in. Meow, meow. So it's funny. Um, but yeah, lots of other people. A, little, a couple other uh, things. Surprisingly enough, Ralph Fiennes is in the movie. And I did hint to another bad guy from Harry Potter being in the movie. He shall not be named. And Eddie Izzard does the voice of that. Not Ralph Fiennes. Which is weird. Because you're like, you have the actual guy in the movie. But you don't want him to do the voice. But... Whatever. I also another fun fact. So I did mention the dialects are going to be in this um, from Doctor Who, and uh, they are actually not the official voice of the dialects. I guess they they were like lifted from the show, but then also somebody else doing the voice. So which is kind of the way. 
Lego's stuff kind of does that sometimes. Sometimes it's the actual person. Sometimes it's clips from the show. And sometimes it's uh, it's somewhere in between. But I thought this movie was fantastic. Um, I thought it's 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 ninety minutes. It's an hour and a half exactly. Um, it is paced beautifully. It is just a start nonstop laughs and action and plot to the end of the movie. There's no real dragging moments whatsoever. Um, I instantaneously like it to the point where I think I might actually like this movie more than the Lego movie. And that was hard because I thought that the Batman character was going to be annoying because I do think he's funny in the Lego movie, but I couldn't imagine going to see a whole movie waited on that performance. So, uh, if you have any of those fears, put them aside because it is stellar and, excuse me, uh, it's, it is just like joke after joke after joke. And if you are even a little bit of a fan of Batman, I mean, and know anything about the other movies or his lore in general, you will really enjoy this. So, um, so there's a lot of, um, and you're wondering, like, oh my gosh, is it going to be another Batman origin story? No, he's already Batman. It's very like he's the stereotypical what you think about Batman, the loner, the I'm Batman and I'm awesome and I play this music and I do this stuff and um, I don't need anybody and and it's it's great because it feeds into that really well and I I'd venture to say I mean. I'm not going to say it's better than The Dark Knight because obviously it's different tone, but this is one of the most excellent, excellently, is that a word? Uh, Just so well handled. The superhero, like being a good movie, being a good Lego movie, being a good funny movie, but also being very good to its its origin roots. Like, yeah, obviously it all doesn't start the same. That You know, we never see Dick Grayson's parents' death. You know, the way he becomes Robin is very different because it – it all beautifully melds together, like the Lego sense of humor and the Lego kind of acknowledging that they're Legos, you know, in that a little bit. And it blends this all together. So, like, the Robin, how Robin gets his suit is very, um, or, like, they reference stuff that, like, okay, well, I'm Batman and I've got this suit that blends into the night and it's all dark and you have to use it to fit your surroundings and and Robin's trying to do the same thing, but he's got like a gold glitter cape on and he's bright red and Batman like kind of calls him out on making fun of him. And then when he says he wants to be called Robin, it, he makes fun of him again and he's like, plays like this theme song. It's, it's just, it's all really, really funny. Um, what I do think is a little interesting though is this incarnation of Robin was very Carrie Kelly, who is the female Robin. Um, like it even looks like her, but it's Dick Grayson. It even has glasses and Dick Grayson doesn't wear glasses, but... I don't know if that was just to make it easier for his mask or something, but it's just nitpicking regardless. But um, a fun fact about this movie, none of the Lego figures in the movie actually have yellow skin either. Uh, I don't know if that's interesting to you or not, but in the Lego movie, obviously they do because they're like straight up the Legos. But um, so the, the, the thing I mentioned earlier that if you haven't seen the Lego movie that you you go into this movie, which you can and still enjoy it, I think you just need to understand that um, they know their Legos. They build, th- so he builds stuff. So they'll be like falling, and he'll be like, "I've got to start building something." And he'll be like, "Toss me pieces." So it's like he breaks apart things and then uses those pieces to create new machines. And so he's a master builder, and the master builder is like explained in the Lego movie, like what it is. And they don't take time to explain it in this movie. You just kind of go, and you're like, "Okay, he builds stuff." I mean. I like that because it, it's like uh, it's not pandering to the audience, you know. It's and and this is a you can go see this without kids. This is straight up like a funny movie for anybody. Kids will love it. Adults are gonna love it. Um, like I said, it's not pandering at all. So it, it just like it knows that you can understand that Batman builds Lego stuff out of Legos. Like it 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 knows that you get that, you know. Um, 
there's a lot of funny in references to Batman's universe because Alfred calls Batman out on acting different ways in in 2016 and 2012 and 2010 and in 19 and then that one weird time in 1967 or I can't remember the year 1966 I think but um, so it makes references to like every Batman movie um, the Joker at the beginning of the movie where he's trying to take over the MacGuffin Airlines uh, uh, plane. Um, he's the the pilot's like i'm not afraid of you you're batman always stops you and he's like well not this time and he's like well he's like name a time he stopped me and he's like well what about that time with the two boats and that's a reference to the dark knight you know there's a lot of stuff like that when batman is going through all his costumes he has you there's fun little like oh there's the classic batman costume there's the this other batman costume and if you look carefully in the background you can see terry mcginnis's uh batman beyond costume which was really cool even robin's costume was reggae man <laughs> so that's why there's an r on it but it's it's really funny explained um this movie visually is stunning as well it does carry through that kind of stop motion look to it that the lego movie started and it's beautiful i mean this type of animation is just wonderful oh my dog my dog's upset about it um but it is like there is a there is a scene where Batman's flying and there's a storm and there's a, there's a big dramatic moment where somebody falls from the Batcopter and it is just like the the color the use of color in the lightning and the the effects and it all just it all just came together so beautifully that I was almost like man I want that like printed and framed in a poster you know in there it it's like that the the color palette they chose to use for this movie is fantastic you you definitely can appreciate it going to see this movie something to look out out for um i also want to say look out for um stuff in the background a lot of like fun little nods a lot of fun little jokes that are just sitting there um a lot of attention to detail out there in this movie uh definitely something worth checking out um i mean the rewatchability on this thing is going to be off the chain. Here's the chain. It's off it. Okay, there is one thing. I I, I do also feel like it was left open. Um, I don't want to say left open, but it could very easily turn into... I mean, they're probably going to make another movie because this movie's great. I, people are going to want it. I'm sure the Batman character is going to show up in the, the next Lego movie. Um, the next The Lego Movie. So I should say that there is another Lego movie coming out in September. They did show the trailer at the beginning of this. Um, it's the Lego Ninjago movie, which also looks funny. And I was like, eh, I'm not as interested in that one. However, after watching this one, I'm like, I'm pretty much always going to go see Lego movies. That's two for two that are phenomenal movies. Um, I'll go I'll go see Ninjago. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Batman's going to show up in the next like Emmett-centered Lego movie. Um whenever that rolls around, which is, I believe, 2018, maybe 2019. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, so there is one question that I'm kind of left open with. So like I said, they, they can, it feels like it's open to be a sequel, as in it'll be another good movie. Um, but they also allude to something else. I don't know if it was even intentionally or not. Like, this is a really good self-contained film. Excellent self-contained film. Um, there is a Lego piece that watches over the Phantom Zone, and it's voiced by, um, uh, oh my gosh, Kemper, Kemper, uh, you know, uh, Kimmy Schmidt, and, um, it, it, uh, it, so it guards the Lego Zone, but it refers to, like, a boss, a female boss at one point, but they don't really, we don't really ever find out who that was, and I thought that was gonna be maybe a twist or something after the credits, but, oh, Ellie Kemper, excuse me, um, but, they don't really ever get back to that, so it's interesting. But um, I, I really don't have, I don't have really have any like qualms with this movie at all. I, I was, I was, I mean, I saw it late too, and I was, it kept me awake, and it was funny. Like I said, excellent pacing, the music, and it's great. Um, it's funny. It makes a, like there's some fun references to the original Batman theme song. The references to the Batman um, lore are wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think what else I could... I mean, I I don't want to be, like, knocking down the door singing this movie's praises, but I, I it was good. It was really good. Um, there's a fun little scene at the end of the credits that's almost like a, a dance number, too. Um, so definitely stay for some of the credits. I usually stay to the end of the credits anyways. I feel like it's a nice, like, you know, 
people want to know their name was seen at some point, you know. So I just like to stay to the end. I feel like it's respectful to the people. I don't expect everybody to do that, though. Uh, but there is not a scene at the end of the credits, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, but like I said, you do want to stay for that dance scene because it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Um, I, I'm curious to see what the tie-in merchandise is like. I know I saw a ton of it, but I uh, like the Lego sets and stuff, but I haven't stopped and looked at it. But Eli is an avid Lego collector. He likes the Lego architecture series. Um, and for Christmas, I know, I'm great. Uh, well, actually, it was for our anniversary. I got him the Lego uh, castle, the um, Walt Disney World castle. Um, and he loved putting that one together. So now, of course, you know, they show Wayne Manor on Wayne Island in this movie. And he's like, can I buy that? Can I build that? And I'm like... I can't even fathom how much it is, but but it made me think like, wow, they're they've got a uh, they've got a great uh, franchise on their hands because like all the toy tie-in rights, like to, I mean I know there's been Lego Batman stuff, but like I just it's kids are gonna go crazy for this stuff, so parents be warned when you go in there, maybe be ready with a little something on the outside. I know you're taking your kid to a movie and that should be enough, but we all know how kids are, so maybe have a little Lego something to go with them along the way. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry this isn't longer, but it's a pretty straightforward movie. Um, well-written, well-paced. I, I, I've said that like 50 times now. Um, you know, excellent voice work by everyone involved. Uh, I, I would see it again today. I saw it late last night and I would go and see it again today. So I definitely, definitely recommend this movie. If you've seen it, I do want to hear your feedback. Let me know in the comments on this video if you're watching or tweet at me at Dispop Show, uh, cause I always want to see that. Um, check out the Ninjango, um, trailer too, that played before this. You can see that online. Um, you know, and if you were on the fence about the Lego movie, I think that you should give it a shot and you should go back and watch the Lego movie as well, because that's an excellent movie. Now, if I'm going to compare the two, like I said, I think I like the Batman movie a little bit more than the Lego movie solely because I think the pacing is better. I think the Lego movie is excellent and I love that it's self-referential even within the movie. That's part of the plot. Um, I thought that was genius to do that, um, and it made everything kind of make sense. Uh, with that said, when I first time I saw it, I was like, oh, it's good. I was like, it's funny. It's good. Every time I watch it, I enjoy the Lego movie more and more and more. So I can't even imagine how much more I'm going to enjoy the Batman Lego movie every time I watch it. Um, I think that this one might be just a little bit higher for me just because the Lego movie toward the end of the movie gets a little mushy and drags a little bit uh, at the very end. But... Um, I don't even want to say drag. I feel like that's insulting. However, it's a good movie. They're both good movies. Um, I When I was at the movie theater, I did see a Beauty and the Beast um, cup and a bucket of popcorn. If you go into a Cinemark, they had a plastic cup and it was a bucket of popcorn, uh, both plastic, and there was it was like seven fifty for the two. It was a nice little treat for the kids. I'm sure your kids are going to love it. I have seen that there might be some Power Ranger... Um, movie merchandise coming out not you know, you know at the theater apparently there's like 10 or 15 different types of cups there's like cup toppers there's a popcorn bucket and there is something i don't know if it's a sipper cup or if it's a popcorn bucket but it is the power rangers helmet the red rangers helmet so if you guys ever see any of these popping up in your movie theaters let me know send me a message on twitter rhino1185 r-y-n-o-1185 um i'm just curious where where they're going i like i like the business of movies. Obviously, I love the Power Rangers, but I also like to see rollout, like how it, how it's developed. So it's not even like, oh, get it for me. It's just I'm just curious, like to see who gets it first and um, and where it goes, you know. Um, so yeah. So rather than ramble on, I know this is a little bit of a shorter one of the movie reviews, but Craig was out of town. I know he did want to see this, but I didn't want to wait too long to see it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, talk to me. Let me know what you guys thought. Go see this movie. I, I promise you it's a fun movie for any member of the family, all ages. Um, just, you know, go in with your sense of humor and and you're going to love it. Um, so that'll do it for me this time. Um, I never know what I'm doing next week, so who knows what I'm going to do next week. But um, uh, there was another movie I saw, though, and somebody asked me to talk about it, and I have already forgotten it. That's how... How much of an impact it had on me um and i was going to tell you guys before i left and i completely forgot uh the academy awards is coming up um 
I'm looking forward to that. That's the like Sunday, the 23rd. I think it's the last Sunday of the month. Um, oh my gosh, is that? That's next weekend. Um, so we got that to look forward to. The a cure for wellness. The Dennis DeHane, um, uh, the gentleman who directed the original Pirates of the Caribbean, Gore Verbinski, is directing that, and it's really good. Um, oh, uh, I saw Split. If you guys haven't seen Split, that movie was really good. Not a kids movie, not a family movie, but. Um, it's a return to form for M. Night Shyamalan. Do not read about it too much because there is a little something at the very end. Um, the the coda of the movie relates to something, and I don't want anyone to blow that for you, but it was a, it was a good movie. <coughs> I myself am looking forward to seeing John Wick 2 quite a bit. I hear rave things about this one, and I really enjoyed the first one. However, be careful because they hurt his dog. Well, they kill the dog in the first one, and it's very hard to watch. Um that part but it is Keanu Reeves come on it's Keanu Reeves um so and Hidden Figures oh gosh I got so many movies to see all of a sudden February's never like this <coughs> but um maybe before the Academy Awards come out we'll just have a quick uh, oh you know what would be fun I do this every year with my friends so if you go on the Academy Awards website um they do printouts of the movies like every movie uh, each category and what the movies are that are nominated and I pass them out and we like check them off and you know we we see who wins by the end of the night and sometimes like you know I learned this from my mom you have a little gift bag for your friends to give away as they leave whoever the winner is but um but anyway uh we could do something fun like that, like a little mini episode and just like run through predictions. And then in the comments of the video or like on Twitter, you guys could send me what you think. And that would be kind of fun way to get into it. But I'm trying to rewatch all the Academy Award nominated, at least the be best picture ones. Um, do the same. We'll maybe do something fun like that um, next week. I guess it would have to be next week because we only have one more Friday in this month. So, so yeah, so maybe we'll do that next week. Who knows? I'm sorry I've rambled on for so long and taking your time. I just, I like spending time with you guys. So, thanks for stopping by. Um, and until next time, that'll do it for this episode of Diz Pop.